So the VR antenna finally arrived and uh, managed to get that installed because uh, I had already done my vertical stabilizer so I had to just uh, take off the top the top row of roulettes and pop this top off and um, insert the, the antenna, uh, run the wiring through and everything. It's just the two connections and uh, that plastic support itself has to be bolted uh, to the antenna mounting plate and uh, at the moment I've just run left the wires the wire coiled up at the bottom and once that's uh, routed through the fuse fuselage we'll finalize that yeah but that was one step okay so I've just unboxed the uh, LRU rack from Midwest so this is the rack that sits just behind the uh, the avionics panel, and I think these are the uprights that they, that go on to, onto them to mount certain items. And I think the GMA. I think that's the only one that sits on my panel. Uh, they have also sent this uh, doubler plate. I believe this sticks onto that uh, the front uh, rig. GSU 25 mounting position, two batteries side by side, and uh, support for these two to hold it back to the uh, to the side rails on the fuselage. And um, yeah, I'm well impressed with how they've packed everything. It's everything arrived nicely uh, without any issues. Um, the GNX375 connector. I think they have already attached the altitude encoder onto the back of it. Um, again, that's the GE GAE12 that's required to meet the LAA or CAA requirements for having a, a certified altitude encoder. Uh, so I think that's already built into that. Um, or this one, I don't know which one that is, but we'll figure out. Um, I think apart from the head headphone jacks, uh, that's the only thing that I need to make sure that before I do the side skins the headphone jacks are, are done properly and then I can lay this all in, uh, into the aircraft so yeah so the plan is to fit this on double plate test fit all these all the rack and then try and uh, lay in the harness it's quite a neat bundle uh, of everything so yeah so, once again thanks for Midwest they did a I think quite a good job uh, in terms of getting everything to me on time and um, seems everything is there a few items that, that they had mentioned that were on back order so uh, I'm still waiting for the logo on my panel uh, the backlit logo for the sling and um, I think I'm also waiting for uh, the control sticks uh, the stick grips um, that's not yet here Okay, so working on this LRU rack, I think one change I'm going to make straight away is uh, how this uh, GMR or GMA245, this is the audio panel, how this remote mount audio panel is mounted. I think Midwest want me to mount this on this rack inside that, uh, but this is normally used to hold the transponder, the radio and the audio panel together. Because I don't have either of those uh, because both the transponder and uh, radio are both panel mounted for me it doesn't make sense just to have all, all this sub-assembly just to mount the GMA so I've just made four holes uh, I've just added three more rivet nuts on here so that that will sit kind of like this so the cable lengths or the harness length should be still the same um, and I won't have such a big thing blocking the axis um, again it doesn't make sense putting um, this thing just to mount this uh, audio panel so I'm gonna get rid of that and I weighed this part that's 820 grams so that's nearly a kilo saved from the aircraft all right so the next task on the list was to set up this LRU rack inside the aircraft so I have cut this will be where it will be positioned 
Um, so Midwest do send the double blade and the rack already built um, or in two separate bits you just have to rivet them together and um, basically this attaches to the to this rib uh, along the top um, they advise to put a spacer between the doubler and the uh, and the rib so that you have enough clearances for because you have to install rib nuts on all of these and um, the doubler being flat and the rib being a flanged rib uh, you can't really put them flush against each other it just won't match so best thing to do is do a spacer so that the rib nuts uh, are not actually attaching to both of them they only attach to the one so there are a couple of rib nuts on the on the rib here for example the ECU ones and on this side I need to install rib nuts for batteries two batteries GSU 25 um, yeah these should be M5 rib nuts and the others are M4 at least that's the whole sizes they put so I need to double check that before I install them um, I had to cut out a bit of slots so that the ECU rib nuts are clear of the doubler Another big big job that got done was the wing tip installation. So the fiberglass tip, um, uh, installing that using a, a straight level so that it's kind of a straight along the main spar, uh, using a ratchet strap to pull the uh, uh, the fiberglass tip all the way along the uh, the skins. Uh, in fact, we had to use a styrofoam block in, in initially to before doing the clear going step, and once clear coated, it was fine. And also used um, 3.2 mil aluminium rivets, uh, aluminium washers that are designed for the 3.2 mil rivets, um, just to add some extra support uh, at the back of the fiberglass tip. And then the crucial step of aligning the ailerons and flaps along the, uh, along that rear uh, trailing edge of the wing, and then doing the final uh, assembly, final riveting of the aileron. The flaps I had already done, so the step was to clamp the rear end of the wing and the flaps together, put a string through and um, get the ailerons in line and rivet that. And um, with the lockdown lifting I had Nick and we had some good weather when we did this step and both wings uh, came together quite uh, quite good, really happy with how how we finished that off. There's not no no gap anywhere between the fiberglass tip and the and the wing skin itself so came out quite good so uh, the wires are put in through for the wing tip lights as well and then it was time to work on the harness and um, lay that all in into the aircraft so uh, threaded it through from the front uh, all the way to the back and the last thing at the very end that needs connections are these uh, audio jacks, um, uh, headphone jacks for the rear passengers. So that was done. That was the first thing that was uh, properly secured and installed. And then this uh, here by the left rear seat is where most of the connections are to be made. And the tail harness is where the um, uh, the tail strobe uh, trim and the GMU 11 harness, all three items come and connect. It's also some wiring for the uh, cabin lights and then um, the harness is just, it, it comes through that center channel where it goes forward um, Midwest have uh, put these connectors uh, for both wings and for the tail section so uh, they can be quite you know easy to install once all the wires are uh, joined together it will be just a quick disconnect uh, when the wings are installed it's great and then both servers, uh, servo connections, they had already wired all the um, terminals for the connecting to the servo, so that was brilliant, so it's quite easy. Um, and up here in the center console, there's the again the pilot and co-pilot audio cables, USB port and things like that. And then the two, uh, the control sticks wiring, uh, pull that through from under underneath uh, the stick and it'll have to be wired up and then connect it to the, uh, the stick grips that I'm yet to receive so I'm waiting on that one and then uh, Nick was kind enough to 3D print a part here 
that would that would perfectly position the uh, avionics harness and the fuel lines away from the rudder cables so that would be uh, that would be a cool feature i guess and uh, also a very functional and the harness routing uh, took it all the way forward and the plan is to have it again this needs to be finalized um, have it behind that rib also had to tinker with this uh, with the routing of the cabin heat ducting uh, to enable that rack to fit um, the the recommended um, setup that TAF provides that doesn't quite work uh, when you install this uh, uh, this LRU rack that Midwest provides so I had to rework that but in the end it was fine uh, the avionics harness itself with all these connections at the front is quite heavy so I used a, a sling to the top uh, of the shed to support it while it's being installed and also the rib uh, I tie put a few threads to support that to the firewall forward as well um, because unless the fiberglass top is on it's uh, not very stiff and then these uh, three lightning holes where the edge protectors are that's where most of the connections will come through to the individual devices the cat yeah, 27 uh, the audio panel batteries all of that connections have to be made and also the panel itself which sits uh, just in front of that <laughs> 